to make a mask. I'm going to show you on a dry mask that has not been heated up first. Just kind of walk through because you have to move fairly quickly whenever you're actually making a mask on a real patient. Pour ahead. You take the mask and you have it in your water bath. Once it's been in the water bath an appropriate amount of time, which for a short mask is about five minutes, you want the mask to actually turn completely clear and stay clear for several minutes before you pull the mask out. My rule of thumb is I have the temperature at a certain point, 158 degrees for my water bath. When you open the door, put the mask in, and close the door, it actually brings the temperature of the water down a couple of degrees. It takes a couple of minutes for the temperature to reestablish itself back to 158 degrees. So when I know, I just watch the temperature. When the temperature is back up where it was to begin with, I know it's been in there probably long enough. So when you pull the mask out of the water, I usually just throw it down on a towel on the floor. Knock some of the water out of the mask because in the holes, a lot of that hot water is going to be trapped, kind of like a honeycomb. You don't want to come over with scalding water and throw it right on a patient. So knock some of the water out. You can see that there, on this particular type of mask, there are buttons that go in. That's the part that goes down onto the patient. You guys have all seen masks when they apply them to patients, so you know how that actually works. You want to have the mask in the water such that when you pull it out, throw it on the ground, and then pick it up again, you still have it in the same orientation that's going to go down onto the patient and onto the frame. What you have to do is give it a little bit of a stretch before you put it on the patient. That causes it not to be quite as tight when you put it on. If you don't do that, it's basically going to squish the patient's nose flat against their face and it's going to be difficult to form it without it being uncomfortable. Another thing, when you put the headrest down, you want to use a shim underneath the headrest. For instance, um, this is an example of a shim for another headrest system. It's basically a piece of plastic that makes the patient virtually thicker than they would be otherwise by two or three millimeters. That allows the mask to shrink that two or three millimeters and not be so stinking tight on the patient that they can't wear it next week when they come back in for their treatment. So what you want is the shim. It actually makes the patient thicker, so when you make the mask and then it shrinks and you don't have the shim in place anymore, it actually fits without being painful. You pick it up off the ground to pick up where we were. Pick it up off the ground, shake the water out of it. I, being right-handed, hold it against my hip with the open side out. I put my hand on the wet, slinky mask and push it down. I push it down about the right amount that you would normally have for the length that it would be once it's on the patient from the head to the head rest. So about that far. You'll notice when you let go of it, it'll immediately shrink back up. Sometimes I'll push it twice. Some masks have reinforcement strips in them. This one just does not happen to have it. If you have a reinforced mask, you can work a little slower. Non-reinforced masks like this one, you have to work fairly quickly because it'll start to set up pretty quickly. So, give it a stretch. Once you've given it a stretch on the way over to your patient, you then approach your patient and line it up with your patient. You put the chin right about here. Give me just a sec. If you have a reinforced mask, you can see there's a cutout. That's for the chin. This reinforcement strip goes across the forehead. The reinforcement strip does not go across the face and this part does not go on the neck. This solid portion is supposed to fit right across here like a chin strap for a football player. So you can see that there are little dots right here. What that does is it decreases the amount of pressure point on the person's chin. You can see there are larger holes right here. That's the part that's actually going to stretch across the person's face and nose, therefore reducing the amount of pressure on the face and nose. You don't have to worry about this unless it have, you have a reinforced mask. A non-reinforced mask, you don't have to do that. But you're still going to be shooting for the same place. The chin needs to be right about here. You don't want the mask itself hanging all the way down on the neck. We're pushing into the thyroid because that's uncomfortable. You'll have to make trims on the mask just to make it to where the person can swallow 
or be comfortable enough to tolerate the treatment. So you aim thusly. You kind of hold it at an angle, touch the chin, and go down kind of in an S shape. It happens fairly quickly, but you end up doing like this. What that does is it drapes it across the chin, gets it on their forehead, and then pushes it down so that you then make contact with the uh, head frame. So, just like on TV and a cooking show, I've got one in the oven already. <laughs> We're going to go right through this. Excuse my machine, it's been under repair. You're going to pull the mask out of the water, throw it on the ground. Give it a whack, turn it around so it's open like this. Give it a stretch. See, it's already setting up. Give it a stretch, get it on the patient, and then push it right down into place. Now, this particular mask has little pins that it goes down into. We're going to pretend that that's down. Now you start forming it. You're going to push up like this so that you make a point between the nose and the forehead such that it goes down into this group. You're also going to pull up on it a little bit so that it's not so tight on the patient. This is already set up. It's already tight on the patient, but that's why you have to work fairly quickly. So you want to make kind of a pressure point there so that you have a contact point at the chin, across the nose, into the nasion, the glabella, and the forehead. This causes the patient not to be able to tilt their chin back and forth. If you had this such that this bridged across from here to here, the patient would be able to move their head back and forth and you wouldn't, get have, you wouldn't have good contact points so that you hold the patient in place securely and reproducibly in the same place every day. So, when you get the mask on, you want to just kind of, what I do is just kind of rub my finger up to the top, right in between their eyebrows. Don't poke them in the eyes. It's easy to do. You don't want to squirt, you know, you don't want to poke their eyes out. So, I'm over exaggerating. You don't have to push this hard, but you're kind of slide the thing up and down, up, down into the nasion so that you get this nice groove right here and you're gonna kinda of pull up on it a little bit too. Don't squeeze their head, pull up this way. It gives a little bit of stretch so that it drapes over their face instead of smashing their face back toward the headrest. So, in this particular case, the last thing you're gonna do, you're gonna to look to see if it's set up. You're gonna kinda of push right here. You can see how it's still stretching. This mask is gonna hold the heat along the base where it is glued to this plastic. Out in air, it's gonna dry very quickly. There's no stretch right here, but you can see I can push and boom, there's kind of a little stretch right there. That's an indicator that you don't need to take this mask off this person yet. This needs to stay on the person for another three to five minutes. When you can push and you don't have give because of the heat held by the base, then you're pretty much done. I would still leave it on the patient another five minutes after that. Technically speaking, whenever you do a simulation for a whole brain, or any brain, or anything with a mask, you're going to make the mask first. While you're working on getting the patient set up, getting marks on the patient, and doing either a real simulation or a CT scan, that mask is going to have time to dry. Now, if you have the reinforced type mask, you can see that on the back side of the mask, some of that solid reinforcement is pressed and glued into the frame itself. That's going to hold heat an even longer period of time. I tend to have a towel that I've wet down with just regular water and wrung out such that it's just barely soppy wet. You don't want it dripping across your floor and getting on your machine. I will drape that towel around the patient such that it draws some of that heat out so that it, it goes a little faster for the patient. These reinforced masks, if you let them dry, just air dry, it takes 10 to 15 minutes. Um, sometimes it's not as long as you're gonna to take to do the simulation. That's just my method. They make these really expensive little gel mitts that you can put in the freezer, and then you can kind of run your hand all over it. That's an expensive way to do it. Or just use a wet towel. I've also got a fan that I blow on the thing. For my particular purposes, I've got a fan that mounts on the back of the CT scanner, blows down the tube over the patient. In that case, you would want to put a towel, or not a towel, but a blanket on the patient if they tend to be cold. 
middle of the winter, you're going to freeze them with a fan. But that fan is actually going to blow across here with, in conjunction with your wet towel and increase or decrease your drying time and your setup time so the patient doesn't have to lay there as long. And you also know that the thing is set up before you have it taken off of the frame and 